How's it going, my friends, and welcome to Silly Scar Models and something a little bit different for the channel. Now, I'm going back in time a little bit for me because um, we're going to be looking uh, in this series at uh, some Warhammer stuff, mainly uh, the 40k uh, stuff. And it's been quite a while uh, since I've actually done uh, a Games Workshop uh, figure. And with some of the new stuff that's come out, and some of the, yeah, some of the new stuff that's come out, I've kind of been looking at it for a while to sort of, um, you know, not so much get back into it, but maybe do a couple of the figures as again something a little bit different. The problem I've had with it, and the part of the reason why I stopped um, uh, buying the figures, is the price of them. Now, a bit full give it to, to to Games Workshop is that a lot of you know effort has gone into making these uh, models um, and figures the detailing uh, and sculpting is and particularly as over the years has come on has been absolutely amazing uh, the concepts and the ideas uh, for them again just absolutely mental um, and I think it's part of the reason why a lot of people um, enjoy uh, that side of the hobby of course with these ones they're not just models you know after you've built and painted them you know you can you can you know you can play your games with them which you know I know there's, there's other ones that do I can't think of any off the top of my head because um, it's not sort of my area um, I never played it uh, I was just more interested in uh, some of these mental uh, figures that you used to see uh, in the shops um, again this is what well, this is the reason why I stopped doing it is because I just started to find that they were getting too, way too expensive um, for what I thought I was getting out of it. Now, I know you could probably say that in anywhere, um, in any hobby, but for me, um, I just found that, again, I just wasn't getting much out of the model for what I was paying for. I know it's probably a stupid way of putting this, but, um, you know, for me, with... I don't know, say like a, any of the models I do, I suppose, tank or, or an aeroplane. What I've paid for that, I feel I'm getting quite a lot of, you know, stuff out of it. So, you know, I get quite a long build time and enjoyment uh, out of doing it. As where, you know, so, so like, um, say like uh, an aircraft, um, I could spend a couple of weeks, um, if not more. Uh, particularly if it's something like a tank, I couldn't spend even longer, especially if I'm doing a diorama on it. But... You know, with like tanks, you know, you can get lots of added extras for it, stowage and, you know, uh, the metal tracks. So you spend a lot of time, you know, putting all that together. And, you know, there's a lot of weathering that can go into those sort of things as well. So, you know, for me, there's a lot of um, lot of hours enjoyment uh, for whatever I've paid for it. As where with these, um, you know, some of them I've seen some of the figures like, in even some of the boxes, like sort of like 20, 30 odd quid. And I'm thinking, oh, I can knock one of these out in a day or so, maybe even less. Um, so it's part of the reason why I stopped, uh, kind of stopped doing them. Uh, but I trawled the Ebays uh, and see what I could see what I could find. And actually managed to pick up quite a few models uh, for not a lot of money, uh, to be fair. Took a while, a couple of them had to bid on. Um, I had my sort of limits of how much I'd pay uh, for because most all these were singular figures, um, and I think the most I paid for them, um, I think it was about 12, 12 13 pounds. I think with the delivery. Uh, if I remember, I managed to get a couple even cheaper uh, than that. Um, you know, so I <laughs> thought, why not? We'll give it a go. And see what happens so uh, with this series um, I'm gonna sort of run these along with other stuff I do because I'm not sure on uh, with uh, you know people that follow me for a while are actually interested in me in doing this kind of thing because I know it's kind of a little bit out of the way from what I usually do uh, so these will come out when I've got them done um, and to be fair that's probably where most of my videos possibly might end up going as well um, so, because some stuff can get done quickly than, than other bits, but anyway, that's for another time. Uh, so yeah, so I'll run these along with other videos that I've got coming out. So for people that aren't actually interested in this, 
um, and you do actually enjoy what I do, um, you know, you haven't got to wait a week or more uh, for something that you're interested uh, to come up. That's that's my theory of it all. I'm all a bit of hope uh, for it. Um, so yeah, so these will be coming uh, along um, when I've got round to doing them and getting them done. So um, to this figure in particular, don't worry. The, the rest of these videos won't have as lots long intros. This I just wanted to get this out. Um, so this, <laughs> I forgot who was called now. I'm gonna have to get it up. So. This one is the Judy Care. Sorry, I had to look that up for I had it in my head for about an hour, and I've done this about six times already. Uh, so, <laughs> so this one we're starting off with is the Judy Care. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, so yeah, there's no particular. Well, yeah, there's no particular reason for this one. It's just that I quite liked him. Uh, you know, and, and and just sort of again, just giving it a go. See if we can do him uh, better. Uh, from the ones I did before, so there's one. The first, well, this is one thing I quite like about this as well at the moment. Quickly going off a little bit, those are the original scale of one of these, which I've forgotten off the top of my head. These about 50, 50 mil thereabouts, and these new ones about 54. So they've come up quite, you know, quite a bit up in scale. Uh, because these ones in particular were exactly the same size as the Imperial Guard. So I know most of you, uh, if you're watching this because you're interested in this sort of thing and seeing what hash I make of this, um, will obviously know that you know they were the same scale as the uh, Imperial Guard and didn't really make a lot of sense because these guys are supposed to be like sort of like eight foot behemoth built like brick houses. Um, and seeing them sat together just didn't make much sense. Um, so they upscaled them. So that was quite uh, cool of them. So yeah, so that didn't probably need to be in this video, but I've said it anyway, because, because. Uh, so, so yeah, so anyway, let's get on with it. Let's have a look at this guy and um, see what I come up with. Um, so grab yourself a cuppa and a bicky and see what mess I make of this. Okay, so this is our Judy Care, um, handsome little fella that he is. Um, she's all, he's all, she, he's all primed and uh, ready uh, to go. And for the first time ever, uh, I've used a wet palette. Um, I've made this up myself. Uh, watched a few videos on these sort of things, um, but I've used a uh, really well sealable um, lunchbox with uh, some paper towel, and I've used. Um, some grease proof, grease proof paper. Uh, now normally it's said to use like parchment paper but I think this is basically the same thing but it does work quite well. And then add a little bit of water, not like I have an absolute, you know, half an ocean in there. Um, you only need a little bit enough to sort of uh, moisten um, the uh, parchment or it's in the case I've used grease proof paper. Um, so like I said at the start of the video, I'm using my um, own paints and whatever I've got to hand and for whatever reason I've decided to go purple uh, so as you can see I mixed a uh, red and blue from Vallejo uh, to, to make this purple um, and just slapped on that bit of paint uh, but you can see you know I've, I've now realized doing this actually how useful uh, wet palettes are normally I've just used a uh, I've got usually a um, ceramic tile uh, next to me and work off that but for painting these figures um, you know keeping them uh, wet or moist or whatever you want to put it um, really does actually help uh, the flow of these paints um, now for some of you guys that are, are watching this probably you know probably know more definitely will know more about this than, than I will that are interest in the Warhammer world um, will probably already know that this is um, probably the most best way of uh, applying uh, the paint. Like I says, I don't really know what I'm doing, so I don't think I'm really going to be able to tell anybody anything new. This is going to be sort of more of just sort of showing you what I've done, uh, really. Uh, so yeah, sorry I'm going to be able to, to really teach you anything. 
Um, but yeah, we'll just uh, we'll see what we come up with and uh, and just let you see how it goes. So you can see I've got the uh, base colour down. You can see it's a nice uh, flat uh, finish. It says I didn't, just never knew how useful uh, a wet palette actually was. Now I've added a little bit of um, I think it actually used white uh, for this um, and sort of tried to do a little bit of edge highlighting. Um, it says it's not something I've, I've used. It's not usually a technique I actually quite I like myself. Uh, but when someone's done it good, I actually do appreciate it. This is just, at the start, it's not my thing. But for the case of this, I thought I'd give it a little bit of a go. Um, also using the same paint, I tried to do a um, couple of scratches uh, in there as well. Kind of sticking with kind of like my uh, style of, uh, of painting uh, as well. Um, which eventually, uh, once I'd, I'd done it, I actually wasn't... Um, wasn't really happy with it um, so I ended up uh, repainting it now at the time I actually happened to be um, at the time of the, or around at the time this I happened to be in, in a model shop and um, browsing through the paints now they don't really do it's a hobby craft I went to and they don't really do much else other than sort of Tamiya uh, and Humbro paints but they happened to do a, a Tamiya purple um, so I picked that up and full well knowing that Tamiya paint aren't the best for uh, hand painting um, but recently found out um, about sort of using a retarder uh, with paint and um, particularly with Tamiya it really does help uh, slow the drawing time um, and it actually makes it more usable uh, for hand painting so I've, I've actually learned quite a lot to myself uh, through making uh, and painting uh, this model um, so yeah so just adding a couple of drops of retarder just just helped it uh, slow the slow the, the drawing process uh, down the only problem I had with it is it come up really really glossy which is not what we want but I thought I'll address this later because there was no no doubt I was going to uh, matte varnish um, the model uh, in the end um, but for some reason I just found it uh, very difficult for me to focus on what I was doing so when I come around to doing the scratch work uh, I, I don't know why but I just found it really I think it was just, just it, to me it just seemed really glary and I kind of struggled um, <laughs> to see it so but as it is, it is now we're still on the um, you know the original uh, paint job which I think actually was more of a darker purple um, than what it probably come out uh, later on. But as you can see, I'm, I'm giving all the sort of edges uh, a little bit of a go in um, uh, the best I can, really. <laughs> so, yeah. So here's where I've changed paint uh, altogether. And I decided to try and do some uh, wet blending, some that was kind of interesting in doing. Uh, I've, I've been watching quite a lot of, um, I've been watching for quite a while actually, uh, Miniac um, by, uh, from Scott, um, he's an absolute legend, does some absolute fantastic work. Um, if you haven't seen his work, um, I don't know I don't know how you haven't, if you haven't, but um, I'll put a link in uh, to his channel in the description down below, um, but I'm really sorry, I absolutely made an absolute hash of it, it looked awful. <laughs> So I ended up repainting it and just sort of scrapping this um, all together. But uh, maybe, maybe in the future I'll, I'll give this, um, you know, more of a go and probably over some. I think part of my problem was the, the surface was so glossy. Um, I don't know. I've never tried it or done it before, uh, but in this case it didn't work out. But it's something I'll, I'll look at um, in the future. So we move on to something I actually know how to do, <laughs> and uh, that was chipping. Um, so what I've done is I've got um, a bit of sponge, um, pulled a few bits out so it makes it really sort of uh, uneven, uh, dipped it in the paint, and as you can see the um, paper towel in the background, I've sponged uh, a lot of it off, so we've just got a little bit um, on the sponge, and just very gently uh, tap it onto the model and whatever paint is still on that sponge will 
transfer onto the model and give us some nice, um, very random um, sort of chipping scuffing effect. Then afterwards, I come in with a fairly fine uh, paintbrush and just sort of um, sort of join a few dots together, make the scuffs a little bit bigger, and just add a, a few scuff marks in there as well. So once I've done all uh, the scratch work, and I was quite happy with it, um, I then went around the model, um, all the purple areas, and did some edge highlighting. So now we move on to sort of the uh, more blingier part uh, of his, uh, his get up. Um, so I've used uh, Vallejo Gold, uh, this is quite a pale uh, gold. Uh, from what I, I originally used uh, was, I think it was uh, gold from Ammo. I didn't really cover very well, um, and I forgot I got this flare of gold, so I used that. So it's a lot more paler, but I liked it better. Um, but yeah, so I've painted all the gold bits that uh, I wanted gold, and then went in with this sort of uh, kind of like nice, rich sort of uh, red colour uh, from Vallejo Game, and just sort of. Uh, filled in any areas um, that I wanted uh, red which was mainly uh, the front of his shin and the inlay of that uh, cross hanging from his hand so as the sort of top quarter of his head is of a skull I thought I'd paint it skull colored uh, so I found uh, some bone white um, from Vallejo game color and going back to my wet palette for this uh, to give us that again that nice uh, smooth finish um, of course particularly with stuff like white or like yellow um, you know it can be quite it goes quite thin um, so it means taking a bit of time with it uh, you know letting it dry and then keep adding coats on so it will eventually you know you work your way up to the full opacity uh, of that color So I did decide to do sort of a little bit of um, sort of shading around the sort of brow and the sort of side uh, of the skull where there'd be a bit of inlay. Um, I used sort of like a, a bit of a blacky brown. Um, was a little bit admittedly too heavy. Um, so afterwards I kind of went over it very lightly again with the bone white um, and then adding actually a little bit of white uh, in there just to sort of edge out you know the sort of the features uh, of the skull and try and sort of make them a little bit more pronounced so I thought with it sort of like of all these sort of uh, blingy bits um, you know and kind of the way he's dressed I thought you know he's kind of like um, you know quite a sort of prime high ranking officially type sort of figure so I thought with his um, his jacket was trench cut or whatever it's supposed to be um, is I went with uh, Hataka um, red uh, primer base um, I also use that uh, as, a, as a base uh, for um, all the uh, sort of le the leather pouches so as you see the two pouches on his back of his belt there and also I used it on his uh, plaz pistol holder as well So then for his uh, gloves, and I'm jumping around a little bit here, but uh, for his gloves I used uh, Burnt Brown Red uh, from Ammo. Um, based it in that and then sort of any sort of ripples or sort of edges um, on the gauntlet and particularly across like the knuckles. Uh, to that I added a little bit of red leather again from uh, Ammo just to sort of again to try and give that effect of um, kind of like a leather a leather gauntlet. Uh, so, yeah, so just edged all sort of those sort of uh, creases there. And uh, again, gave it, hopefully gives it a little bit, uh, a little bit more depth. So 
So, on the mention of depth, um, I've decided uh, to sort of do some, uh, I suppose what you'd probably call as low lights. So, using uh, my ready brown, sorry, burnt brown. <laughs> did I use that? I think I did. I used burnt brown. <laughs> um, mixed in a little bit of black just to darken it only slightly. And uh, just went through all... Uh, the rec recesses through the tunic, uh, the sleeves and uh, the gloves as well. So I thought with the uh, Judica's nice flash timepiece he's got there, uh, rather than just leaving it all blank, I thought I'd try and sort of add a bit of sand in there. So I used that uh, bone white uh, again there and with a blue ink covered it. I think could have turned out a little bit better but I know I couldn't do any better than it, than it already was. So once um, I was happy with everything and it would let dry, I went over everything uh, with uh, Tamiya uh, panel liner, I used the dark brown uh, just to sort of pick out um, more of the recesses and uh, sort of get everything to uh, sort of stand out a little bit more and uh, also sort of sort of tone things down a little bit more and uh, you know I felt it gave it that sort of more of a, a grimier look. With the sword I'd um, had an idea of basing it in the gloss black and edge highlighting it with the light green. Didn't really look good uh, quite as quite as good afterwards so I went over it again uh, with a green ink. I was still feeling he was looking uh, still a little bit uh, too clean. So around the lower parts, uh, particularly around the sort of foot and ankle area and a little bit up the uh, tunic, I uh, used some European earth uh, pigments just to give it um, sort of like a, a dusty look. Um, and this gave me the idea uh, kind of for the base, which was going to be kind of like a um, sort of sort of desolately Mars type wasteland sort of thing so yeah so we just put um, put all that pigment on um, I added a little bit of um, pigment fixer to, to obviously fix it on uh, and then I just added a little bit more pigment uh, over the top of that because it took a little bit away um, and also darkened it slightly as well now for that base I used uh, Ammo's uh, Heavy Earth, um, this is quite a thick sort of uh, pasty enamel um, paint kind of thing. <laughs> it's got quite a bit of uh, chunky pigment in there so it gives it quite a uh, rough uh, texture. So I smothered that uh, across uh, the top of the base. Didn't worry too much about it being sort of, um, you know, neat at all because, you know, we don't want it to obviously too, um, too neat. I also use this uh, to fix um, some uh, little bits of stone to the bottom of the base. Um, also with it being uh, quite thickly put on, it sort of, um, once you put those stones um, in to the um, stuff, it, uh, it kind of comes up a little bit around the stone. So it makes it look like it's actually, you know, um, part of the base rather than just uh, sat on top and also I did the same uh, with the figure um, pushed him right into it so it would sort of come up around uh, his foot and again make it look like he's actually sort of you know his actual weight is sinking uh, into the earth <clears throat> then after that I painted the uh, stones in sort of like a, a red colour um, and then afterwards gave everything a quick dusting with uh, the European earth uh, pigment uh, again and uh, that was pretty much the base all done. So there we go, that's the uh, Judicare done. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, please leave us uh, some comments in the description what you, what you think. Um, particularly if you guys have been following me for a while um, and you've watched this video and is this something you'd want to see more of. Um, of course, I'm good. I will do the other figures um, anyway, uh, and do the video for that. But I'm just interested to see if it's you guys, something 
if you guys would like to continue seeing this sort of stuff mixed in with uh, the other things I do as well. So, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you're new around here and you do like what you see, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And again, please leave us any comments, any feedback should be absolutely uh, appreciated. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you again soon.